Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining another webinar with Boral Agency. I'm Patricia Borat. I'm going to be presenting today ethical AI marketing practices and how to build trust with your uh, audience and your customers. So it's going to be a very interesting topic, especially nowadays that we are relying more and more uh, using AI and how are we able to not only stay safe and protect our users, our visitors, our audience, our customers, but also following the best practices that are going to allow our brand to position itself as someone that is innovative and then staying up with the trends and that cares about our customers. So if you are ready, let's go ahead and let's get started. So first things first, as usual, make sure you are following us on all the platforms. We are going to be sharing this recording later uh, on LinkedIn, but also we're going to share it in all the other platforms. So make sure you're following us. And that way you also stay in touch with us. And if you have any questions or if you need to, uh, you know, get the notes or ask for some of the freebies, just make sure you reach out to me and just ask. Okay, so what's going to be the agenda for today? First, of course, we start with the basic, right? What are the ethical considerations in AI-driven marketing? Then we're going to move into, okay, what are some strategies that you need to take uh, into consideration to build that trust with your audience? Especially nowadays that we see so many leaks like oh your data was leaked or we had a, a bleach or whatever in in our um, a data breach in our system and people are becoming less and less trusty so how are you able to build trust with your brand and also not only just saying that you're doing you know the best you can but actually implementing strategies that are going to help your audience stay, stay safe then we're going to go over a few examples. Actually, I have two examples that I want to share with you of two companies that are really winning on this field and are doing a great job to keep uh, ethical AI marketing strategies. And lastly, I'm going to share with you three tools that you can use to help you with your ethical, uh, ethical AI marketing practices. So we're going to cover a lot today, so I'm going to try to go as slow as possible because I always get excited when I talk about marketing and I go too fast. So let's go ahead. First, ethical considerations. So number one, of course, you have to take in mind data privacy, right? So that's number one. So your data privacy means, okay, are you, what are you doing or what steps are you taking in your company to safeguard your audience, your, your customers, your visitors' information, and how are you respecting the different privacy regulations uh, that are already implemented? You've probably already heard about GDPR. It all started in uh, Europe, the European Union uh, created these regulations, and some companies in the US kind of like complying with GDPR and they made their website GDPR compliant, and now California created the C CCPA. <laughs> I always want to say just CPA, but that's a different type. So the CCPA, which is literally, uh, these are regulations that are going to help you kind of like manage the data. Like how are you collecting data? What are you doing with the data that you're collecting? Are you keeping it? If you're keeping it, what are you doing with it? Or if you are not keeping, how are you kind of like getting rid of the data, right? Like what systems do you have in place? This is extremely important uh, because nowadays with, with everything going digital, right? And the more and more we get used to using just digital technology for everything. I mean, come on, we don't even carry cash nowadays. Uh, ethical data privacy uh, regulations are important to protect us so as a company, as a business owner, as a marketing person or IT person in your company, it's important that you are following and complying and your compliance with uh, all these data privacy regulations. Now, 
it used to be a time where you could still kind of like get away with it and not comply with it. But now, because uh, I was at the beginning when they just started putting these compliances or regulations in place. But nowadays, if you if your website is not GDPR or C CPA compliant, uh, you can actually end up getting uh, like fines and things like that. That's why you see so many cookies alerts and like, oh, we have this type. This is what we're doing with your data. Now, cookies are going to go away as well, but that's a different topic. And we can talk about that at a different time. So let's jump to the next one. So the next ethical consideration that you want to have in mind is enhancing your transparency in your uh, in, in how your website is collecting data, right? So I think it's very important that you share how you're collecting data. If you have a software, Right, because for a website, if you just have a website, you just have to tell people, hey, this is what we're doing with your data when you visit our website, right? But what happens if you have a software or if you have an application, right? What are you doing with that data is one part, but then the next part is like, what's the algorithm that you're using? How is how is interpreting data and how it's uh, how it's working, right? How the algorithm works to either show things. That's why, you know, you talk about, you know, Instagram algorithm, it's, you know, it's highlighting this type of content more than this, or it will prioritize this based on that, or depending on what you like, what you don't like. So you have an idea of how the algorithm works, right? And of course, I mean, this is like, if you are just kind of like hearing about it, right? But if you get into the field, and you actually start reading all the documentation, <laughs> you can actually understand more about the algorithms and how it works. The same with um, any kind of software, you want to have some transparency. Unfortunately, not everybody follows this uh, so great, right? Like they're not as the best at doing this, uh, but I think it's very critical for your brand to, uh, to be able to share this, how your algorithms is working within your app to build that trust. And some applications are already doing that, especially in terms of advertising, right? Like you get that pop-up saying like, oh, you don't like this ad, we're not gonna show this type of content anymore. Or even on Instagram, I think you can just even select, I don't like this post, I don't wanna see more things about this. So you are like understanding uh, kind of like how the algorithm is working and the more you like a specific topic, the more that is going to be showing you. So that's basically part of the trans trying to be transparent with that. Now, the next consideration that you wanna take in place is biases, right? Like you wanna prevent any kind of bias and discrimination. Um, AI systems, unfortunately, can unintentionally create a lot of uh, discriminations or, or amplify biases if you don't include everything when you are submitting the information. So for example, uh, let's say you submit your target audience and you didn't include uh, all of these types of like, let's say ethical, I mean ethical, um, ethnicities or races and all of that, so if you just submit a specific information or one audience type, um, your AI will unfortunately and just basically exclude all the other, uh, like let's say races, right? So it's gonna exclude them simply because you failed to submit all of that information. So you are creating all of this bias and discrimination and intentionally, right? Just simply because you didn't feed enough information. Because just remember like AI, it's a machine at, at the end of the day. And it's gonna learn from the information that you present and the information that you submit. So when you're submitting information, you have to be very, um, very careful with the information that you submit to be able to add everything to avoid any kind of a discrimination and make sure that you're actually promoting fairness and inclusivity, equality, because you want to be able to use your AI tools to help your brand instead of actually negatively 
impacting your brand and creating all of this bias and potentially backlash in your, your brand all, all completely, right? So make sure you keep all of these considerations when you are using AI for your marketing, right? So number one, make sure you're compliant, right? With that data privacy. What are you doing with your audience, your customer's data? Number two, make sure you're transparent. Let them know what you're doing with their data. And number three, make sure you are biased. You're submitting all the information to avoid any kind of discrimination uh, unintentionally, right? But make sure you're training your AI to prepare properly. Okay. Now let's move to some strategies to help you build trust, right? So number one, of course, is communication. My computer is not communicating. There you go, <laughs> communication. All right, so you wanna build trust, of course, by providing all these you know, clear disclosures, disclosures, like I mentioned before, on how you're using AI in your campaigns or your customers' interactions. And nowadays you even see it uh, that people disclose, like, right, this is an AI, this video was created using AI, or this post was written by AI tool. So people are using and communicating, but not everybody's doing that, right? Some people are trying to be sneaky. Don't be that type of person. Make sure you are providing clear disclosures on how you use the AI in your campaigns. Uh, this is kind of like the first step, the first step to build trust with your customers, right? Uh, because if you are communicating not only that you're using it, uh, but you can also start communicating how you're how you are handling their um, data, especially if you are compliant and if you are actually using a specific tools like the ones that I'm gonna share later, uh, this is even going to help your brand because it's going to tell your customers or your prospects like, hey, I care about you and I'm handling your data responsively, right? Like I'm not just uh, storing it or it's not unsafe or I'm not misusing or manipulating your information. I'm actually keeping it. I'm following all the ethical practices and I care about you, right? The next one, uh, just run some AI audits within your organization. And this is where you're going to be finding different uh, uh, pockets maybe that you were just not thinking about, right? Like think about... Uh, this is not only going to help you, I'm sorry, uh, this is not only going to help you with your customers, but it's also even going to help you if you have investors and all that, or how you're protecting that as well. Because when you have a data breach that you could have avoided just by doing an AI audit, right? Like, especially if you do it like every year, every six months, every quarter, it all depends on how much traffic you get on how much uh, visitors uh, and how much data you're manipulating. Right, that's going to help you determine how many audits or the frequency of the audit of the audits. Um, this is also going to help you personalize the experiences, which at the end is also going to help you with the relationship that you're going to have with your prospects, returning uh, on a better brand positioning for your company. So everything is connected, right? Because the more you care, uh, then you can start sharing like, "Hey, we're doing an AI audit." and now we implemented this new uh, data privacy, whatever system, right? Uh, it really does help you with your brand reputation to run those audits. And then the last one is, again, I can mention data privacy um, like more than what you're gonna hear me say it today. So data privacy um, obviously is extremely important. So we're not gonna talk about why data privacy is important. But what I wanna say is like, when you are safeguarding your data, your customer's information, you can actually use that to help you promote sustainability, promote innovation within your company, and that's gonna help you with the brand reputation long-term. So at the end of the day, following these ethical AI um, privacies is going to it's going to cause significant um, brand enhancement, right? Because it's gonna show that your company is up to date with the trends and is actually an innovative company, right? Instead of living in the old ages. Uh, like I still see websites that are like 20 years old <laughs> and 
you know, it, it shows me that, okay, this company hasn't been relevant. And most of the time it's because it was owned, you know, by, you know, the, the first owners of the company. And now they, there's a succession plan and now the son or the daughter is taking place and they realize, okay, the first thing that we need to do is revamp the website. Oh, wait, we have no data privacy. We have nothing in place, no SEO. So they start implementing. That's when I start seeing those old websites, right? So data privacy is uh, extremely important. Please, please make sure you keep that uh, in all of your strategies. All right, so now let's talk about these two examples. And who doesn't love Sephora, right? Okay, so Unilever is everywhere. Like we have it in so many products that uh, we use on our daily life. And luckily, Unilever is one of the uh, companies that is really winning on the ethical data usage and AI transparency, right? So on the data transparency, they're communicating very clearly and very openly on how they're using uh, the data, how they're collecting the data, but also what are they doing with it, right? So that ensures full compliance with GDPR, like regulations like GDPR, of course. Mm. And most importantly, it ensures that our data is safe because, I mean, we all use Unilever in one form or another. And it's kind of like ensuring that our data is handled properly, right? Now, by using all of these AI fairness and AI transparency practices and implementing these as part of their marketing strategy, Unilever was able to build a stronger uh, a stronger trust with their consumers and with their database. And they have been able to not only, and this is the beauty when you start up being open about how you share your data, but they were able to also create very personalized uh, marketing campaigns that's aligned to their values and preferences. Because of course, at the end of the day, what you're doing with your data, with the data, right, when you're collecting that, the goal is to personalize your marketing campaign, right? Like really be able to create campaigns that are connecting with the specific target that you're going after, right? But you don't want that. You don't want to do that like hidden, right? Like not telling people that, oh, I'm collecting your data so I can show you a better ad. But instead, hey, I want to collect your data so I can show you a better ad. Do you mind sharing this information with me? So people like consumers, and customers in general are going to be more open to share the information because, yeah, I don't want to see an irrelevant ad to me. I want to see the coolest products that are relevant to me. Um, and this also applies for business to business because I can hear my B2B folks out there <laughs> saying like, oh, Patricia, this doesn't help for B2B. But let me tell you that you, you're able to also collect this, especially uh, if you have a company, let's say, uh, especially now that with ESG, with with so much um, so much content around, let's say oil and gas, right? Like oil and gas, that industry itself is changing a lot. So there's a lot of companies that are staying still in the old way, like just oil production. But there's a lot of companies that are exploring all the different alternatives that are available, right? So your company cannot necessarily go from wind to solar, not, not all of them at least, right? So it's important that you are able to separate, right? Like collect data from your audience and separate like, oh, this person only cares about solar, then, you know, I don't want to show them anything about wind, right? So that's basically what you're doing with your data. But you need to tell your customers, your consumers like, hey, I want to know what kind of products or what kind of services you're interested in so I can provide you with better information, right? That's basically what you're doing. And Unilever did a great job with that. And the same with Sephora. If you don't know Sephora, it's a, it's a beauty a consumer store, like all makeups for women. So I'm sure most women know about, about the store. So it's a global retailer. Uh, they have all kinds of... Uh, personalized beauty recommendations. So what they created is they created this virtual makeup artist. And with this application, basically what they're doing is uh, for the users, you are able to submit your information, which in this case is literally submitting a picture of yourself, right? Um, submitting 
information where you can try makeup virtually. So as you can see, I mean, you are submitting facial data information. So that's extremely delicate, right? So Sephora uh, basically were very transparent on what they did with that data, how they collected it, how they use it. So basically allowing, asking customers to consent first on like, this is what we're gonna do with your facial data basically, right? So that was one. Then the next one, they were able to really highlight on the inclusivity because uh, they were able to, they were able, like people with different skin skin tones were able to use the app and also people with different like facial features, right? Were able to use the apps, which really kind of like broke all the biases and all the um, like discriminations helping Sephora's brand because, you know, in the past, sometimes there's been brands that only serve a specific type of audience, right? But with Sephora, when they released this app, they made sure that it's going to allow any kind of skin tone, any kind of facial features and ethnicities to be able to use the app. So that was a huge win because uh, it's not only helping, well, it's not only obviously preventing all biases with the AI tool itself, but it's also helping and elevating Sephora's brand because it's including all audiences, right? And so people are more connected. So obviously using um, the use of AI on this marketing strategy for Sephora was a huge win because it didn't only enhance the customer experience, but also uh, it provided a huge value, right? Providing personalized uh, beauty tips on what type of makeup works for your type of skin or not, as something that, you know, it's sometimes it's a little bit hard to know <laughs> when you're trying to choose the right, the right tools. So as you can see, using ethical, using AI is not bad, but using AI in a way that you're not communicating what you're doing it with it to your customers, that's where it becomes bad, right? That's when it's not good uh, because you're hiding this information from your customers, you're not transparent, and you're also exposing them, right? Like if you don't have data privacy um, in place, you are literally exposing your customers and your consumers. And this applies to all industries, right? So now let's talk about what tools can you use to basically protect, right? Like how, what tools can you use for ethical AI marketing. So I'm recommending three tools that go from uh, a little bit more pricey all the way to like free pretty much, right? So first we have IBM with AI open scale. Oh, I'm sorry, I look at this way because I have my bigger screen this way. <laughs> first we have IBM Watson's uh, open scale, right? So this is designed to monitor and manage AI models with a focus on fairness, um, accountability, transparency, explaining how it works, so all of that. So it helps the business, uh, the business model stay compliant and stay ethical and free from biases, right? So basically it's gonna highlight things like that, right? So one of the key features is literally the bias detection, which bias, uh, it sounds ridiculous, right? Because you're thinking it's a machine. But again, if you don't feed the information, the machine will well, will unintentionally create a lot of biases and a lot of discrimination. And, and that's a huge problem uh, for you as a business owner or as a marketer or a marketing director for a company, right? So AI, uh, the Watson, IBM Watson Open Scale can actually continuously monitor uh, any kind of biases or potential uh, risk for biases, right? Um, it also will give you tips on how to promote transparency and uh, is going to highlight any issues that you may have in, in case like, you're not staying compliant with GDPR or CCPA. Now, next we have the OpenAI GPT-3 Playground. So this one is, this one offers you two options, right? It can be free or it can be pay as you go. Uh, and you can basically create different scenarios for ethical content, um, 
and it can help you stay kind of like mindful, like it will give you recommendations on what to do to stay compliant, right? So one of the biggest things with um, GPT-3 is basically will promote you, it will help you promote the fairness and kind of like responsible use of AI. Uh, it does really follow all the gui guidance um, and ethical standards. Now, of course, I would recommend that you use the pay-as-you-go pricing because it will help you kind of like generate marketing messages and marketing strategies where you can feed more information and it's going to learn from your brand and you can upload documents. So it just gives you more tools than the free tool, right? Because when you're just using the free, yes, it's going to provide you content and it's going to help you. Uh, but it, it's kind of like... It's open to a lot of risk because you can you can forget to upload the information. You know, we're human, so we can forget to add more information and we can stay biased. So that's where you can expose yourself. But if you do the pay as you go or, you know, the paid version, then you have more leverage. And then the last one we have is uh, TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is uh, open source, is free to use. Um, it's basically like a privacy extension that you can install and enables you the, the creation of basically different machine learning tools, right, or models that you can use um, to help you with the privacy, with the data privacy. Data privacy is the, the key element to stay ethical, right, because, again, we don't want to expose anybody to hackers and spam or anything like that. Right. So this one really helps you prevent exposure of individual data. So if you don't have anything and you're not able to have like a paid ethical um, or AI privacy, just at least use TensorFlow to help you audit uh, because that's what these tools are going to help you do as well. Right. Help you audit where you can, where, what data points you are exposing yourself and exposing your customers. Um, and also it can help you, TensorFlow can help you create different models or privacy, privacy preserving, I guess, <laughs> like different techniques and tools, right? Um, because it's open source though, that's what I like. I mean, if you are a little bit more tech savvy, honestly, that's the way to go because uh, it's open source. And by being open source, you have way more uh, resources, you have a whole community that can help you, especially uh, whenever you are not able to find a specific case or a specific, or you're having a specific glitch or issue, you have an, you know, you have a whole community of developers that can help you answer the questions and whatnot. Um, so again, whenever you are utilizing TensorFlow privacy, you're ensuring, you're, you're gonna be able to ensure that your customer data is remaining confidential, uh, helping you really build trust and helping your brand uh, grow and and really stay stay top you know top of this technology technology uh, change that we're going through nowadays. Okay, so that's all for today. Please make any questions. I know it's a little bit of a complicated topic, and I was trying to keep it. A little bit high level and not get into the technicalities of uh, the GDPR. But we do, we did write a blog about how to keep your website GDPR compliant. So uh, I invite you to go and take a look into that. I'll make sure I'll put it in the comments. We have more content on our website as well. Please take a look at it on how to stay compliant and how you're protecting really your consumers and your customers and prospects and on how you're using their their data and make sure that it's confidential and nobody is uh, exposed to any kind of risk. All right, so that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for joining and I hope to see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.